All right, cool. So we're back now. Um, and uh, first thing that uh, we're going to go ahead and pick back up on doing the designated port selection for the non-root bridges. Now, as we remember, we got all the root ports. The root is actually here. And all the root ports are uh, been selected. So, like I said, the easiest way to go about figuring out the designated port is go segment by segment. You know, that's the best way for me, at least. So starting with switch one, and the segment between switch one and switch five, we determine who has the lowest cost of the root bridge. This guy does because his cost is 56, his cost is 100. He's gonna get the designated port, right? And he's gonna get the alternate. Switch six is gonna get the alternate. And he will be blocked. No traffic for you. Switch six, you are blocked. Perfect. Now, going between the segment between switch one and switch two, we look at the advertise the, what the cost is. His is 56. His cost is 100. So we already know he's going to get the root for it. I mean, the designated for it. Yes, yes, yes. And he shall get the ultimate. And you will be blocking. Blocking. So we got that blocking. Perfecto. Now, focus on this segment between switch 2 and switch 5. His distance is 100. His is 100. And what's the rule? If the uh, cost of the I, if the cost is the same, then we go to the lowest bridge ID, and based off of MAC address in the bridge ID, switch two. Actually, you know what? Because we put the uh, primary, I think it's eighty ninety six. That if you do the secondary, um, I, I want to say it's eighty ninety six um, to be sure. But um, okay, but. So the one with the lowest bridge ID, which in this case is going to be with the lowest priority number, it's going to be this guy, right? So we're going to make him the designated. And this guy, alternate. And he will be blocking. But look at all that wasted bandwidth once again. And then same thing here, switch two and switch three. His cost is 100. His cost is 100. Now we go for the bridge ID, which is the same for the priority number, and the MAC address, which is switch two is lower, so we can already guess. He gets the designated port. And he gets the alternate. And that link is blocked. Perfecto. So same thing here. We're gonna go through the process between these two. Switch three and switch five. His cost is 100. His cost is 100, but his priority is lower. So switch five gets the designated port pretty much on both sec uh, selections of the segment because he has the lowest bridge priority, all right? And this guy gets two alternate ports, all right? And this guy, bam, bam, goes into a blocking state. Those two go into a blocking state. So that's good. Now let's do the segment between switch four and switch uh, three. His is 100, his is 100, right? That bridge ID, this guy has the lowest MAC address, so switch two. Well, switch three will be the uh, designated port so designated port in that segment, and switch four is gonna be the alternate. I mean, that's gonna be blocking. Now, we'll also do this one here. Where switch four and switch five, same thing, 100, 100. We go with the lowest priority. Now switch five has the lowest priority because of the secondary command. And we make him designated and we give him alternate. And that port is blocked. So we're semi done. Now, this is where it gets a little hairy because technically you have two potential root ports, right? Now, I haven't tested this out, but it should, this interface, this second interface up linking to switch six should become a backup port, and this side should be blocking going towards that up link to the switch. Now, you see what the topology looks like. He has a link, he has a link, he has a link, he has a link, he has a link. And Spanish, like I said, it's pretty damn cool because, you know, once you start to see how it all works based off of the theory, you know, it potentially will never cause a switch so if some, you know, if somebody doesn't do any improper misconfiguration because it, by design, it works if configured correctly, right? 
Um, so you see the, the redundant paths, and what's so cool about this with Cisco is because it has the purview and um, uh, instance of implementation, uh, you can have multiple spanning tree topologies for certain um, VLANs, or if you incorporate uh, MSTP, um, then you can have one set of VLANs using switch 6 as the root, and then switch one other set of VLANs using switch 5 as the root. So that's one of the pretty cool things about it. So let's go ahead and uh, configure switch 6 to be the root, and then we'll switch, switch, switch 5 to be the backup, the secondary root. So switch 6, we're going to make him the root. So config T, span tree, VLAN, and for this one, we're going to focus on VLAN 1 root primary. Right, and then switch five, same thing, root, secondary, speed to bridge. Okay, so it actually made it 28.672. So we'll go ahead and update that. It's still lower, so you know, it's it's still lower than the default 30, 30, 32, 768, 28. Is that the number? I can't really that shirt because I remember 762. And then um, I don't know if you guys know about when the priority is calculated, it's actually at the default, the priority plus the VLAN number. It's called your extended, um, I believe it's your extended bridge ID. I think that's the way it's called when it's incorporating the VLAN number. So your actual priority is 28762, but plus one for VLAN 173, plus 10 for VLAN 10 would be uh, 82. And so on and so on. So you get the idea. So, spanning tree should have gone through its whole little election process. And now let's do some verification. So let's hop the switch six to make sure that he became the root for VLAN one. Show spanning tree VLAN one. And we have exactly what we should be seeing. All our ports are designated in forwarding. Perfect. So let's just start in the line. Switch one. We'll start with switch one. We should have the port channel going to port switch six as the root port and the other two ports in that switch stack as going uh you know what this is gonna now that i modified this the other links uplinks talking to this guy this should be incorrect now because his no actually no I'm, I, I take that back i'm sorry because his cost is still 56 going he should still have the two designated ports with the one root port going towards switch six or switch one Spanning tree, VLAN 1. Right, so we have all four of you. Two designated ports in the root port, which is the port channel going to port 6 4. Perfect. And notice, these two, remember, these guys lost the election, the designated port selection, because they, he has a lower priority because of the equal cost to the root. This one technically has a higher bridge ID, but because his lowest cost to the root bridge is 56, and his is 100, he gets the designated port. So... You know, that's, you know, things like that you got to look out for because this is what, those are the type of things that you're going to end up getting tested on and get tricked up on by Cisco because they're good for that. Now, switch two, same thing. We should have the two alternate ports here with the one root port and one designated port. So two blocking, one and two forwarding. So, spanning tree VLAN one, and we see that two blocking, two forwarding. So, CDP neighbor. 0, 02 is blocking, which is going towards switch 1 as it should be. Perfect. The link going between switch 3 is blocking as it should. No, it's forwarding. I'm sorry. The link going between switch 3 is forwarding as it should be. All right. And the other link, uh, Ethernet 0, 02 between switch 1 is blocking as it should be. So we got our two blocking ports. Um, O2, which is going towards switch one, and then O port channel one, which is going up towards switch five. So that's working. Perfecto. Now this guy, he should have one, two, three uh, blocking ports with two forwarding. Switch three should. So three blocking ports with two forwarding. So spanning tree VLAN one. And as we see, three blocking ports with two forwarding. Um, if we want to get down into the uh, neighborships to see which interfaces is which, 
the two blocking interfaces, Ethernet 00, Ethernet 00 is uplinking to switch 5. Back to our diagram, it's blocking to switch 5. You know what, and I think because I don't have Backbone Fast enabled, or is it, uh, what is it, Loop Fast? Or... It's one of those ones, I think because I don't have that enabled, we're not going to get that backup port. Um, like I was explaining to you with the root, because it's not going to um, keep up that backup path going to the root. So uh, unfortunately, it didn't do the backup port that I anticipated. Oh, I'm actually on Switch 3 still. I'm sorry. You know, I digress. So... But essentially, he's doing what he's supposed to do. Three blocked interfaces, one, two, three, with the two forwarding, which is our root port and our designated port. Perfecto. Now let's hop over to switch four. So let's spin a tree, VLAN one, show CDP neighbor. Okay, so it didn't do the, uh, okay, so it didn't do what I thought it was gonna do. So we got the three blocking ports, which is actually gonna be three alternate, because they didn't do the backup port to it. And then the one root port that's 40. And as you can see, blocking, what's the Ethernet 0 port? Zero one. So, so spanning tree V one. Oh, okay, okay. Um, now what the heck port is this? I'm not sure. What, this port is actually not even connected. Um, let me just double check. We got four ports. We got four ports. I don't know why this is showing up. This it's IOU, one of the bugs. If you have one of the interfaces up, sh shut up, and it's not um, actually there, it's just gonna go into the forwarding state if it was an edge port. So let's ignore that. We actually have the four uplinks that's supposed to be there, and that is there. So we're supposed to have our three blocking with the one forwarding, um, as we have in our diagram, and which we did. So now switch five. We'll take a look at that um, config. Yeah, so switch five, let's make sure we're supposed to see. We're gonna have all designated ports except for one blocking, one blocking alternate going towards switch one. So spanning tree VLAN one, and we have one alternate blocking with the rest all forwarding. Um, and the one blocking should be the interface, so CDP neighbor going towards switch one. Ethernet zero zero, Ethernet zero zero, the interface going to switch one. So um, so, you know, that's just my example of spanning tree. Uh, like I said, get really good at diagramming a little, you know, a, 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 a network and, and work on manipulating spanning tree topologies yourself. Like I said, just work, start on a small topology because once you get to the larger ones, it's just the same. You just work by segment and once you get the segment works out, once you figure out all your root ports, you figure out what the root bridge is, figuring out the designator ports isn't hard. Um, some of the information that I would recommend grabbing before you start doing so, make sure you grab your, your interface cost, your port IDs, your bridge IDs, um, and yeah, and with that information, that should be enough to give you uh, what you need to figure out what a spanning tree topology looks like when you're getting into a network. So um, that's my video. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions, drop comments, let me know what you wanna cover. I plan on doing another video with probably DHCP snooping next. Um, figured out that it works in IOU with the images that I'm using for IOU. So figured it'd be a cool little lab to show, um, show you guys how that operates. But um, yeah, this is Courtney. Thanks again. Later.